Hello students, I am Dr. Aruna Mohan and in this session I will discuss about another sense organ of our body, the sense organ for hearing, the ear. We all know that we have two ears and we hear through ear. Have you ever wondered why we see through eyes and we hear through ear? Why it is not just the opposite that we are hearing through eyes and seeing through ears? Because the nervous system which comes into play in these sense organs interpret vibrations in a different manner. In case of eye, the vibrations are interpreted by center of vision in the form of image, whereas in case of ear, the vibrations will be interpreted in the form of sound in the center which is present in the brain and called center for hearing. Hearing is very, very important and that is how we communicate, that is how we understand the matter and thus it is also important for all of us to know what our ear is, what are the structures, what organs in the ear help us in hearing and how we should take care of our ear so that our hearing capacity is not impaired. This diagram shows you broadly three areas of our ear, the external ear, the middle ear, the inner ear. The external ear is simple which you can see from outside. It is called pinna which will collect the sound for us and then it continues inside as external auditory matus a sort of canal. We call it matus because it goes like a canal inside and we call it external because that canal you can see from outside and it belongs to external ear. After going little inside, it ends on one membrane we call tympanic membrane. In fact, we can approach our ear from outside up to this point only and beyond this point we cannot reach. If you try to reach beyond this point, that means you are trying to puncture your tympanic membrane which is also known as eardrum. At this point of explanation, my dear students, I would like to tell you that never insert anything in your ear. Sometimes you insert hairpin or back of safety pin or maybe matchstick. What happens? You are rubbing on the eardrum because you can reach only up to that point. Suppose you rub too hard and that eardrum is slightly damaged. It is going to affect your hearing capacity in a very, very different way, in a very serious way. Sometimes some people, they even use knitting needles to scratch the eardrum. Once you have a small hole, very small hole, pin size that will affect total hearing capacity for you. So eardrum should be kept intact and very safe. So never insert anything inside your ear. In case you want irritation in the ear, use earbuds or cotton. Coming back to the topic of tympanic membrane, tympanic membrane is end of external ear and beginning of middle ear and hence we call it eardrum. We will now understand how our middle ear is. Middle ear has ear ossicles. There are three small bones which are called ear ossicles. These are smallest bones in our body. They are arranged in such a way so they are connected with one another and one side is connected to the eardrum from inside and other side is connected to the inner ear. In other words, you can see that middle ear is connecting external ear to the inner ear in the form of bones. These are small bones and they will help in transmitting vibrations from eardrum to the inner ear. The external ear is going to catch the vibrations of sound. 
and will give it to middle ear. Middle ear will do only one thing, transmit it to the inner ear and inner ear is going to do the major thing of interpreting this vibration as sound. Now these three bones which are called malleus, incus and stapes are arranged in a very specific fashion which I am explaining in the diagram now. So in the diagram I am now showing the presence and the position of three ossicles which are called ear ossicles. This is malleus, this is incus and this is stapes. Stapes is attached to the oval window of cochlea. If I say oval window of cochlea means inner ear and malleus is attached at the base of eardrum. What I am trying to explain to you that malleus begins at eardrum, then comes incus and then comes the stapes. Stapes is put on the oval window which belongs to inner ear and it is called oval window of cochlea. Cochlea is a structure which is present in the inner ear. The purpose of these three bones or ossicles is to transmit the vibration from external ear to the inner ear and their arrangement is very very specific. Of course, these three bones are considered to be the smallest bone in our body. Out of these three also the stapes is the smallest. The smallest bone in our body is stapes. Now I move on to inner ear. The inner ear has got several structures. You can see cochlea, bony labyrinth, membranous labyrinth and also the fluid which are filled in various areas, perilymph and endolymph. Now membranous labyrinth is a membranous structure filled with endolymph. Outside is the perilymph. This whole thing is enclosed in a bony structure. We call it bony labyrinth. You can understand in this way also. There is a bony labyrinth which is hard and inside bony labyrinth is the membranous labyrinth which is soft. Between membranous labyrinth and bony labyrinth is perilymph and within membranous labyrinth is the endolymph. These lymph or fluid present will also help in various vibrations in the inner ear. The coil structure on the right side of the diagram is cochlea which is going to serve important function in hearing mechanism. This particular diagram will explain the membranes of cochlea. As I told you cochlea helps in the hearing mechanism. You can see there is resonor membrane and basilar membrane. I am showing you in the diagram. This is resonor's membrane and you can see scalar tympani and scalar media and scalar vestibuli. These structures are important because they are going to help in hearing mechanism and this is a tectorial membrane. This membrane will also help and then you will have cells with hair. This is the scala tympani and these are the hair. And the important part in the ear which needs a special mention is organ of corti. It has cells which are called hair cells. They are called hair cells because they have hair. These hair are going to receive the vibrations and these hair will vibrate themselves and with this the lymph will vibrate and this vibration will move forward. And this is the main mechanism how hearing will be conceived. Let me explain it to you in this diagram. You can see organ of corti here and you can see hair cells. These are hair cells and you can see hair or the cilia. Now when sound vibrations reach this point, then these cilia will vibrate and this vibration will reach the membrane, tectorial membrane. So they are also called auditory receptors. Once they reach the tectorial membrane, this vibration or this message is taken by afferent nerve fibers. 
Efferent means A. A means it is taking something towards brain. And once the vibrations reach the brain, in the particular center of brain which we will call here is the center for hearing, these vibrations will be interpreted as sound vibrations and you will hear the sound. In the inner ear, we have talked about cochlea. Near cochlea, there is one more important structure. We call them semicircular canals, which are three in number. These three semicircular canals have different functions to perform, that is, balance of the body. At this point, I would like to emphasize that ear is doing two important things for us. One is hearing, other is balance. When you walk, you stand, you sit or do any work, your body has to be in balance. You should not start falling here and there. That balance is kept by ear with the help of these semicircular canals. I will explain this in the diagram. You can see in the diagram, it is a vestibular apparatus. There are three semicircular canals which are placed right angle to each other. There is otolith organ and the secule, utricule. Secule and utricule together is known as macula. Then there is ampulla and the crista ampullaris. Macula plus crista together will help in balance of the body. We now come to mechanism of hearing. We have touched on this point many times that sound is collected by pinna taken through auditory meters to the eardrum. From eardrum it will go through three ear ossicles, malleus, incus and stapes and from stapes it will go to inner ear where it will create vibrations in the hair cell. The cilia of hair cell are vibrated which will vibrate the fluid part and that is taken up by the membrane and from membrane it goes through efferent nerve fibers to the cerebral cortex where they will be interpreted as sound. This mechanism of hearing let me explain you in the slide also. The sound waves which reach the external ear that means pinna they reach to eardrum after that and after eardrum they are passed on to three ear ossicles namely malleus, incus and stapes. Stapes is touching the oval window and from oval window these vibrations reach cochlea. There is wave in the lymph which will ripple the basilar membrane. With the result the hair cells are touched upon and they start pressing tectorial membrane. From this membrane the nerve impulse is generated in afferent fibers and these afferent fibers in the form of auditory nerve will take these vibrations to auditory center where these vibrations will be interpreted as sound. So that is how our ear works. So in today's session we have understood the structure of ear and the functioning of different parts inside the ear and how we perceive the vibrations as sound. With this, we come to the end of the session. Thank you. Mm -hmm.